and welcome back to Teacher Gimbel's channel. Today we'll be going over illustrative math, geometry, unit one, lesson eight, using technology for constructions. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe at the button that you can find all the way down there. Let's get started. Problem one, select all of the digital construction tools that do the same job as a pencil alone without a straight edge or a compass. So A, point, a plotted, point plotted on an object. Yes, I can plot a point with a pencil. A polygon, a polygon is a figure that's made up of straight lines and I can't make straight lines without a straight edge, so nope. A circle through a point, I need a compass to do that accurately. A point of intersection, yep, I could just identify a point of intersection. And a line, I cannot draw a line without a straight edge, so not B. And that's the answer to the question. Let's move on to the next one. Problem two, how can you test to see if a diagram made using digital tools is a construction or just a drawing based on an estimation. So I've got a bunch of shapes that I drew over here. We're gonna figure out which ones were constructed and which ones were based on an estimation. Well, if I touch this polygon and I move it, notice he stays the same size consistently. This over here is based on a construction. This guy over here, I draw a point, he just drags. I, he is not based on a construction. I drew that based on an estimation. So if the point stays the same in the relative distance to the other points, we can assume it's a construction. If we drag it and it moves one of the points, then we would assume it is an estimation. Let's go on to problem three. Han thought he constructed a rectangle using digital tools. When you point, move point A, the screen looked like this. What did Han do wrong? So Han made something that looked kind of like this. Well, this is obviously not a construction. He must have tried to freehand it using points because if he had constructed it, it would have looked something more like this. And when he moved a point, it would have stayed the same shape. Problem four, select all of the digital construction tools that do the same job as a straight edge. Okay, a circle with a center through a point. Uh, no, a straight edge draws lines, not circles. A plot pointed at an object, also not a line. Point of intersection, also not a line. Segment, yep, that's a line. And a line, yep, we use that to draw, we use uh, a segment has a starting and an end point and a line segment goes on forever, but we use a straight edge to draw both of those in our geometry constructions. All right, next question. Problem number five. Which digital, con digital construction tools does the same as a compass? Uh, a compass draws a circle. All right, I'm done. That was easy. Let's go on to the next question. If you don't know that a compass draws a circle, you should probably go back to the very beginning of this unit to start going over these questions again. Problem six. This diagram was made using a digital construction tools. One of the triangles was made using the polygon tool and the other was made using the regular polygon tool. Explain what you could do to tell the difference between them. So similar to the last question, we had trying to figure out if something was a polygon or not a polygon. This dude over here is my regular polygon. When I drag him, it stays a regular polygon. This, so I would assume this was made using a polygon tool or the regular polygon tool. This guy, he's also a polygon, but he's not a regular polygon. And I know that because when I drag one of my points, he stops being, or stops even looking like a regular polygon. So this would be the polygon construction. This over here would be the regular polygon construction. Problem number seven. Uh, which digital construction tool, can I move this? Which digital construction tool would help determine whether point C or point D is the midpoint of segment AB? Well, we got to figure out where the midpoint is. Hmm. Angle bisector. We have no angles to bisect, so that doesn't particularly help us. Perpendicular bisector. Well, if I perpendicularly bisect it, I would find the middle. And the middle is the midpoint. So I think this is the correct answer, but let's quickly check our other options. A perpendicular line. I could construct a perpendicular line, but that's not gonna tell me anything about the middle. And a parallel line would be chilling over there, over here, or up there. And that's not gonna help me figure out what the middle is. So constructing the perpendicular bisector, which will chop the segment in half and identify the midpoint will help me identify the midpoint of segment AB. All right, next question. Problem eight, 
Here is a construction of a regular hexagon inscribed in a circle. That just means it's inside the circle. Not all parts of the construction are so shown. Explain how to use how to construct an equilateral triangle inscribed in the circle centered at A using digital construction tools. We want to construct an equilateral triangle inscribed in the circle. Well, if I was going to construct an equilateral triangle, I would say draw a line segment from here to here, a line segment from here to here, and a line segment from here to here. And there we go. There's my equilateral triangle chilling inside of my regular hexagon. <clears throat> Problem nine. Here's a construction of a regular hexagon inscribed in a circle. Not all parts of the construction are still shown. Explain how to construct a regular 12-sided polygon inscribed in the circle centered at A using digital construction tools. So we have our six-sided polygon inscribed in a circle. We now need to figure out how to make a 12-sided polygon inscribed. Well, basically what we're going to do is we need to bisect all of these segments. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to theoretically use our perpendicular bisectors. And we're going to bisect all of these dudes right here. And our perpendicular bisectors are going to look something like this, which we're then going to use to identify these intersections. Now we take these intersections and we're going to connect them. Now each of our six lines has turned into two. Like each of the six sides of the polygon has turned into two, leaving us with a beautiful 12-sided polygon that is inscribed inside the circle. So basically we need to take each of these sides, split it in half to identify where on the arc to put that point, and then use those points on the arc to create your 12-sided hexagon. If you know a different way of doing that, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe so you can see more like this. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.